Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi Israel. Please share the room with at least 10 people if you're joining in. We're going to send notifications to whoever's online to see if they want to jump in on the live. It is currently 10.30 in the morning in the States. 5.30 over here where I'm at in the continent of Africa. So make sure you uh, like and share the room. The t- Today's topic we're going to discuss is Italy not having babies. Uh, shalom to you, Priscilla Rivera. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Welcome. Share the room, sister, with at least 10 people. So that way it can attract more viewers and also get the likes up. That's going to attract more viewers as well. So what's going on in Italy, man? It looks like the descendants of the Romans are having some problems. Oh, no, it's me, Mario. <laughs> Mario Kart and them is having problems. Y'all make sure y'all get the likes up, tap the screen. So recent news popped up where there was... A news article that popped up that said that the country of Italy in the last three months has not had any childbirths, no kids whatsoever at all, none whatsoever, zero, zilch. So I'm I'm assuming this is not talking about the indigenous people. I'm, I'm assuming this is talking about the descendants of the Romans, you know? So this news just came on the scene where for three months straight, these jokers not having any kids. So what do y'all think about it? The fact that Italy, the descendants of the Romans are not able to have kids. They can't have babies, y'all. Something, something going on. Something is going on. Shalom to you, Rafael. Most high Christ bless. Welcome to the room. Welcome to the room. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. We invite everyone to uh, share the room with at least 10 people. That way we can get into a discussion. This discussion, I'm not necessarily going to go over a lot of precepts. Just going to touch on some current events and some news that's been uh, popping up in my feed. I I heard the story break like a week ago, actually of this incident where it's saying that in Italy, they're not having childbirths. And I thought to myself, Hmm, what could be the contributing factors to this? Uh, Missy, Shalom to you. Welcome to the room. Share the room with at least 10 people. That way we can get more people in the, in the live. Italy has not had babies for three months, not the first month. Not the second month, but three months straight, this country has not had any children. So now I'm wondering to myself, what are the implications of this or what can be the cause? I'm a critical thinker. I like to think. Y'all ever seen the movie Children of Men? Y'all ever seen the movie called Children of Men? If you have, put a uh, one in the chat if you've seen that movie called Children of Men. If you haven't seen that movie called Children of Men, uh, press two. Put a one in the chat. If you heard of the uh, film, it's called Children of Men. Put a two if you have not. Okay. I Citizen One said one. Okay. You ever seen the movie Children of Men? Priscilla said two. TK said, uh, TGK said one. Okay. Who else? So far, we got six people. We got two. Okay. So we two and one. So that's two people that say yes and two people that say no. Okay, we got three. Okay, so when you watch, so I'll explain the premise. When you watch Children of Men, right? The Children of Men movie uh, stars this like Brazilian Australian dude, and he's going about the city because he was able to find the last pregnant woman in the entire planet. Some sort of catastrophe catastrophe happened where mankind wasn't able to produce children anymore and the last person that was born was like 2019 so now slowly over time people were starting to disappear off the earth because there was no more child's birth so while you see the movie people are shocked and amazed because the first person that actually 
was able to give birth to a child was a black woman. Literally, y'all. In the movie Children of Men, the only one that was able to give birth was a black woman. And it had me thinking like Mother Miriam, you know, giving birth to the Christ, Miracle Baby, those kind of vibes. Shalom to you, uh, Ari, as well as Jose. Yeah, welcome to the room. Welcome to the room. So I'm watching this movie like years ago and I thought to myself, hmm, what was the factor that made it where human beings were no longer able to produce children? And then I remember reading in the Bible something as it relates to a judgment pertaining to the Idumeans. And guess what? The judgment was the judgment was that the seed of Rome would be spoiled. Literally, that's what the scripture says. His seed shall be spoiled. Okay. So like, uh, like citizen one just put, yep, they, sh they share bits of truth. So what was the de determining factor that the Romans or the people of the earth are not able to produce? Let me tell you all a secret, y'all. That's not the only European nation that's not able to produce. Their greatest fear, their greatest fear is not being able to produce children, y'all. That that's their greatest fear. You understand? So now they made a uh uh United States census that came out in 2020 and they said by 2045 by 2045 their greatest fear would be realized when there'll be more blacks, Hispanics, native indigenous outnumbering the troglodytes, outnumbering the the uh, Brad Pitts in them. You understand what I'm saying? So recently a news story came out where Italy for three months straight was not able to produce children at all. At like you go to the hospital, the mature the, the maternity ward is cleared out, y'all. Empty. Like no babies being born. Like knock on the doctor's window, like, hey, you had a baby today? No, sir. For three months straight, y'all. That's not normal. That's not normal. So do you remember the story of the relationship between the Hebrews and ancient Egypt. Y'all remember the story? What happened pertaining to the firstborn children of the Israelites? Remember, when the Israelites were being oppressed by the Egyptians, what did the Egyptians do to the children? Put it in the chat. The children of Israel that was impacted by the Egyptians. If you remember the story correctly, what was going on with the kids? What was going on with the kids? Put it in the chat. It's in the book of Exodus. Everybody should have seen the, 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 the movie Ten Commandments, right? Or at least heard the story of Moses, right? What was happening? What was the first thing that happened in that story? I'm relating it to something going on now. I'm relating it to something going on now. If you recall the story correctly, right, what was going on? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Y'all remember the story of uh, the Egyptians messing with the Israelite kids? What was going on? Because I'm going to I'm going to correlate that story. Gathered. Uh, somebody said gathered them up. Yes. What else? What, what what was going on with the Egyptians? How were they misdealing with the ancient Israelites? Put it in the chat. Y'all remember the story? So for those that remember the story, and for those that don't, what was going on was that the the kings of Egypt, the wise men, right? They were working together and they said, these Hebrews, they're going to outnumber us. They're stronger than us. And if we don't do something about it, they're going to be more of them than us. Y'all remember that? So what did they do to the first 
to the male children? What did they do to the male children in that story? When you read that history, when you read that history, you find that the Egyptians were saying, if it's a boy, don't let it stay. If it's a girl, let the girl live. Y'all remember that? Put a one in the chat if you remember that story. Put a one in the chat if you remember that story. All right, we got Rafaya. We got Brazil. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So everybody remember that story so far. Good. Pink Panther. Shalom, Pink Panther. Welcome to the room. I used to like that TV show, Pink Panther, too, when I was a kid. So as we relate into this story of current events going on right now in, in uh, Italy, what ended up happening was the... Egyptians was trying to throw the children of Israel into the river Nile to unalive the kids. But what was the direct judgment that God had on them because they did this? Remember the plague that happened? The plague was, shalom to you, uh, Jose. Uh, shalom to you, queen. Welcome to the room. The plague that happened was the simple fact that the Egyptians ended up having their firstborn taken out as well. That's what you read about in the story. So now, how do I relate that to the history going on right now with Rome? How do I relate that to the situation going on in Italy, where for three months straight, they're not able to produce children? Y'all see that? What was going on with Rome? Rome was the same group that authorized the enslavement of the Israelites. They passed laws saying, get rid of their kids, get rid of their people. That's what the Idumeans did. That's what the Romans did. Okay. So now there's a particular judgment going on right after C-19, right after C-19, where reports are coming out where some of these women are sterile. Some of these men are shooting blanks. Some of these people not producing kids. That should be alarming for anybody that was uh, messing with the uh, jibber jab, the snake bite, the venom, the bee sting. You understand? That should be concerning for anybody that's dealt with the bee sting. Because if y'all remember, Italy had a massive uh, campaign for administrating their sorcery, right? So did the United States. So did France. So did many other. Shalom to you, Sister Renaissance. Peace and blessings. Welcome, welcome. So if you notice, right, these uh, Eurocentric powers all had a campaign recently pushing for a particular medicine to be administered to everybody. Shalom to you, uh, amazing anom uh, anomaly. Welcome to the room. So Italy right now, right now cannot produce children that should be alarming for the people that stay in italy because what was the determining factor was it the scientific administration of sorcery aka pharmacia aka pharmacaea or is it some sort of divine intervention what are your thoughts ladies and gentlemen what do you think about this because when I when I look into this information, what comes to my mind is the scripture that says that Esau is not able to hide himself, that his seed is spoiled. So we know that Esau is the Romans and the Romans live in Italy and Italy can't have babies for three months straight. So definitely something is going on where you could either say that this is some sort of scientific program that's impacting their citizens or some sort of divine intervention where God is saying, I don't want no more of them to produce them. You understand? Queenie put in a chat judgment. Yeah. Whether it's divine judgment or human interference, something is going on. Something and see, that's the thing. Having human beings is the building blocks of a society, meaning no more babies, meaning no more people, meaning no more communities, meaning no more nation. Y'all understand that? Don't come. Hey, you, you've been messed. I'm gonna put it like this 
Y'all been messing with blacks and Latinos and Native Americans all that time saying y'all superior, right? But obviously the seed is bad. The crop is spoiled. <laughs> the crop is spoiled. So guess what? I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say the Italiano. Hey, sorry, sorry, my friend. Don't come over here. Don't come asking for black women. Don't come asking for Hispanic women. Don't come asking for Native Americans. Y'all don't like us. Remember that. I used to call us all the type of derogatory terms, but now y'all ain't having no babies. So now y'all want to try to intermingle with Africa. I know how they try to do. Guess what? Remember, if you if you understand history correctly, the Romans were the same jokers that tried to invade all the world, right? The Italians invaded Eritrea. No, they invaded Ethiopia and created the sub colony called Eritrea, the sub state, right? So they wanted to try to intermingle with the Africans directly. And Ethiopia was like, nope, you're not colonizing over here. You better take your uh, cave dwelling ass right back to Rome. And that's what happened. <laughs> so now in 2023, a new story pops out where for three months straight, they're not able to have children. If this continues for the descendants of the Romans, it's going to have dire consequences, ladies and gentlemen, because guess what? Kanye, <laughs> ah, she put Kanye. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Hey, the funny thing about Kanye, right? That young, that brother did not learn his lesson with the first. Uh, 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 how can I put this? The first cave dweller, right? The first, the first woman from the flat, flatback tribe. What's her name again? What was that lady that uh, Kanye West married? Put it in the chat because I, the first one, not the second one. Uh, what's her name? She Kim she had like Kardashian. That's the one, the Kardashian Kim Edomite Kardashian, and she like an Armenian or something like that. She from one of them caucuses. Anyways, that brother didn't learn his lesson when he was crying all on TV, all on the news, talking about the white woman treat me bad. She won't let me see my kids, and then he messed around and got another one. Brothers don't learn their lesson, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, brother, get away from the Idumian women, man. They're just strategically placed in front of rich and wealthy men to extract resources. That's what they're there for, man. Notice all the celebrities, all the, the uh, uh, prominent men that are in our communities. What do they do? The other nations say, hey, here's a white girl for you. Here you go. You can't make this stuff up. That's exactly what's going on. So then now, <laughs> I'm glad the sister put the put the uh, message of, of Kanye. They're not producing children. The Italian women are not but three months straight, y'all. Not able to have kids. Esau seed is spoiled. That's what the Bible says. There's some, there's some that don't believe the Bible, but... The Bible says Esau's seed is spoiled. Seed goes into bloodline. Seed literally goes into bloodline. Your seed is your children, your generations. So think about it, y'all. If I have an apple tree and the, the apple tree is uh, unable to produce apples and I'm an apple farmer, what's going to happen to my business? My business is going to fail, right? Right. Or what if I had an orange business where I sold oranges, gave oranges to different people in different communities all across the world, and then my seed wasn't growing and the crops for the orange trees were diminished. That tree would cease to exist. You understand? So the same thing right now is happening with human beings, y'all. The same thing is happening with Italy, the Romans, they're not able to produce kids, y'all. That's that's concerning. That is very concerning because if it's just Italy and it's isolated, all right, cool. But if it's something that's impacting other nations, other, because when you look at Italy, it's smack dab in the middle of uh, uh, Europe. You know, you got Italy, you got France, you got Portugal, you got Spain, you got Germany, like they're all in the vicinity of each other. Shalom to you, Teflon. Welcome to the room. They're all in the vicinity of each other, right? 
So what are the implications if a nation cannot produce its own seed? That means that nation is going to cease to exist, ladies and gentlemen. That means that nation is going to be gone. That means that nation, that's, that means it's done for. So I'm surprised that only a few news outlets even touched upon it. You know, I, I, there was a lady by the name of Lisa Cabrera that did a news article on it and she went over the information. But now that that the 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 cat's out of the bag, what are they going to do about it? Don't come on this side. That's what I say. Stay down there. You hear? <laughs> Don't try asking for black women. Don't try asking for Latinos and natives. Y'all was already doing that during colonization and all of that. So leave us the hell alone and y'all handle your business to yourself, you know? And and think about it, y'all. This is not just impacting them, right? Where they're not able to have kids. Think about the technologies that scientists and prognosticators and sorcerers have been pushing forth today where they have something called in vitro cloning, right? Genetic modification of organisms. So that tells you they already knew something was up. Okay. They already knew something was coming up soon. OK, so that's showing you that they knew in advance that their numbers would start to diminish. And because of that, they started doing a process called Blanquio Mento. I'm going to touch on a little bit of history y'all, that many are not aware of. When the Europeans went and invaded uh, South America, right, you had Spain and Portugal, right? Many of the people that lived there were black and brown people, right? The Inca, the Mayans, the uh, Olmecs, right? The uh, people of the Yucatan, the people of Honduras, the people of Guatemala, Peru, uh, the people of uh, Brazil. You know, all these indigenous people were living there first. So then when the Europeans went down there, they had a process called Blanqueamento, okay? They also had a process called uh, Limpieza, uh, limpieza something sangre limpieza sangre which means pure blood right where they were trying to outbreed right the native indigenous and the black people that were there by multiplying within their generations okay in, in other words trying to whitewash right but guess what that process did not work you understand that process of Blanquiamento did not work. Yes, they did have a lot of production of the the various uh, groups that they wanted to formulate. But eventually, like the Bible says, the seed of the Idumeans was spoiled, meaning even though they were trying to interbreed, it wasn't working. They were still having less births than the native indigenous and the blacks that lived in there. So for every two to three children that they were having, blacks, Hispanics was having six, seven, eight, nine kids, right? The other nations was so scared of this that guess what? There were projects where in South America, in the Caribbean islands and in the United States, they would secretly they would seek. Thank you for the contribution, sis. They would secretly give people a uh, what? How can I put this? A, an administration of uh, Deprovera, which is a, 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 a sterilization type of medication to prevent pregnancies. And they would deceive the people to say, oh, that was just a uh, that was just a uh, what is it? of a. Uh, 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 administration of like a polio vaccine or a uh, rubella or stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? So they would lie to the people, cause them to be injected with this their sorcery, and they in turn was not able to have babies. So then the numbers diminish. Instead of black and brown, we're having six, eight, nine, ten kids. Now they were saying, oh, you don't really need that much kids. Oh, it's too expensive to have kids. Just have one or two, you know, maybe three. You know, they give that delusional thing that they tell the people, the 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 two kids and a dog and a picket fence and all that foolishness, right? And people fell for that crap. So now I'm going to hip you up to some other historical information. 
for a long period of time in the state of North Carolina. They had a sterilization, a sterilization campaign where if a child, right, let's say she's 15, 16, 18, 20, right, young woman has a child, the 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 uh, medical services department would have them sign a document and then secretly give them sterilization, meaning give them a hysterectomy after childbirth without their consent, y'all. That's what they do. That's what they were doing. So now Rafaya had put a comment. He said they did that here in the U.S., in Africa and Mexico from 1930 to 1978. Yes, exactly. CDC approved Depo Vera injections. That's why I tell black women and Hispanic women, whenever these uh, medical professionals say, hey, you want the birth control? Let me give you a shot. You better not fall for it. Don't be simple. You get that shot. The next thing you know, you can't have babies at all. And then you're wondering, you're like, I just wanted the, the birth control for just a year or two while me and my a uh, uh, boyfriend were doing it. I just didn't want to get pregnant. And now you can't have babies and you 50 and you're like, why am I 50 years old and I can't have no kids? There you go. So because of these secret programs that the uh, Eurocentric delusionalists were pushing on the people, now God says, all right, let me uh, turn the tables around. And guess what? Italy is only the first country that we know of that cannot have or produce children. There is many more that hasn't been on the news. You understand? So very important information to know. I just wanted to give y'all an update about that because there's a lot of secret things that are happening within the communities of people that many people are not aware of. And it's important to know these current events and examine them as it relates to the scriptures. You understand? As it relates to the scriptures, it's very important to know these things, okay? So I say that for those that have the eyes to see, that they forewarn people to not deal with these Idumians, okay? As you, I thought I wasn't going to bring a scripture, but I guess I will. Babe, can you let me use your phone, bring up a Bible verse real quick? Let me get uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Let me read a scripture real quick. This is going to this is going to relate to uh Kanye West and the uh, the uh deception of of people into mingling and mingling their seed with the seed of men like the Bible says not to do. Okay, the scripture says not to do this. So let me read one precept real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 3. Okay, these these for the the strong delusional types that say, "Oh, I want to deal with Brad Kit Brad Pitt, he's so handsome. I want to deal with uh, uh, the Kardashians. They're so beautiful. No, 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 no. No. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse three. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. That. Oh, thank you. Thank you, beloved. I got to take off my do-rag. I apologize. Thank you, love. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. That's Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Why did God tell the Israelites not to intermingle with the other nations? He's going to tell you the reason in the very next verse. Verse 4, for they will, for they will Turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So the Most High already said to his people, don't intermingle with them Idumeans, don't mix with them Canaanites, don't deal with those Ishmaelites. Watch this. I'm going to show you another one. Let's go to Tobit. Tobit chapter four. I'm going to show you something very interesting written in the book of Tobit that we should understand. Okay. We should really take heed to these scriptures because the scriptures gives us chief counsel and guidance on how we should instruct our sons and our daughters. Okay. Watch this. 
Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. So remember, how does this relate to the story of of, uh, Italy, right? The Bible says, the Bible says that interracial dating is considered whoredom. Not my words. This is directly what we're reading from the hidden books of the Bible known as the Apocrypha. Let's read it one more again. It says, beware of all whoredom, my son. So this is a father instructing his son on how he should conduct himself. You understand? And chiefly take a wife. Notice it doesn't say girlfriend. Chiefly take a wife. Notice it doesn't say busted baby. Chiefly take a wife, notice it doesn't say baby mama, of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman, a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. Y'all see what the Bible is saying? It's explaining to a young man that when you involve yourself to get married with a wife, make sure that you deal with a woman of your tribe, of your lineage, meaning marry within the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. That's what we're reading here out of the Bible. So we can apply that to today because now you're seeing stories where other nations are not producing children. God is placing judgment on these people. I'll give another example. Let me finish reading this and I'll give you another example. It says, for we, for we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Remember my son that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred, of their own kindred. The word kindred means race. And were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. So there's a direct correlation between your descendants having a heritage given to you by your forefathers. Noah was a prophet. Abraham was a prophet. Isaac was a prophet. Jacob was a prophet. And we are the descendants of such. You understand? Uh, It's over there by the wall. So what should we learn from this experience? Not to deal with these other nations, not to deal with these other nations, not to deal with these other nations. That's what we have to do because God is placing judgments on them. I'll give you another example. Y'all remember the story in Genesis Shalom to you, Daniel. Y'all welcome to the room. Welcome to the room. Share the room with at least 10 people. Make sure y'all tap the screen to get the likes up. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that Italy, a.k.a. the Romans, a.k.a. the Idumeans, a.k.a. the Edomites, a.k.a. the Troglodytes, the cave dwellers, the flatback tribe, the red lobster. These jokers can't have babies for three months straight. Italy has not given birth. Why are we relating this to the Bible? There are stories of judgments that take place when people piss the most high off where they anger God Almighty. And he said, oh, you want to mess with me? You want to you want to agitate me? OK, I'm going to judge you. I will give you an example from the Bible. When you read the book of Genesis. You find that Abraham was with his wife, Sarah. While he was with his wife, Sarah, the Egyptians spotted how beautiful this black woman was. And what happened? They wanted to present her before the king of Egypt. They wanted to present this beautiful black woman to the king of the Mizraim. Mizraim are the descendants of Ham. Ham is the progenitors of the dark races, but not the Negro. Okay, not the Negro. You mess with my thing trying to look at it. It, 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 I got it on a special setting. <laughs> My wife's trying to look at the live to see how many people. There's 50 people in the live, beloved. <laughs> uh, come on, come in. Look, you want to see the messages? Hey, y'all, say shalom to my rib tomorrow, y'all. Say shalom to her. 
She want to see everybody on the chat. She want to say hello. So shalom to all of y'all. Shalom to him, y'all. Welcome to the room. Uh, somebody said it won't let you share. The room. There's, there's not a share button you can't see. You see all the sisters saying shalom, babe? Look at us. Shalom, shalom. Hi. You got Ron, Sne Ron said hi. Shalom. You see? There you go. You see? All praises. You see? Get some love for that. Get some love for your people. There you go. <laughs> All right, they go, uh, brother. Your your uh, your uh, your fire. Mm -hmm. So, think about it, y'all. Think about it. In the story, our forefather is going to live in Africa. This is how you know that Black history is in the Bible, and he was amongst the indigenous Mizraim who are the descendants of Ham, and what happened? They saw that this woman was so fine, beautiful black dime, princess, you understand? That guess what? They wanted to present her before the Egyptian pharaoh, right? That's the story that you read about. Shalom to you, salvation. Welcome to the room. So now, what ended up happening she said, they won't let me send either money either. TikTok shuts me down. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your TikTok, Sister Queenie? Oh, man. It won't let you share lies. It won't let you get, send gifts. Turn your phone off and turn it back on. What's up, wrong with your phone? <laughs> Welcome to the room. Most high Christ, but Shalom. So as you read the story, right, this woman is so drop dead gorgeous, okay, even though she was older, she was so fine. Okay, y'all know black don't crack. Y'all know black don't crack. But guess what happened? As they presented this woman before uh, the Pharaoh, she had to say, look, uh, uh, I'm Abraham's sister. Uh, I'm Abraham's sister. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not married to him. That's my brother. Why? Because in his mind, he said to his wife, look, these Egyptians, I don't know how to get down. They may try to take me out just because you look so good. Right. And that's what you hear about in the story. So they take this woman and they bring this woman into the house of Pharaoh. Now, she now she didn't lay down with him. She didn't do nothing with him. But they beautified her. She put on these nice royal garments and she was presented before him. And guess what? God judged the Mizraim. He judged the native indigenous Egyptians with a plague where they could not produce children, y'all. They could not produce children. So now watch this. The same exact thing happened when Abraham interacted with Abimelech. Watch this. Genesis chapter 20, verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of, of Sarah, his wife, his wife, she's my sister. Y'all see that? And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. You see how greedy these jokers are? They'll see a beautiful woman. And if they got a military force, they're not even going to ask. They'd be like, oh, that's your sister? All right, come here, girl. That's how they used to do back in the day, man. No remorse. Like, come here, girl. <laughs> I know some of y'all brothers used to be like that in the, in the club. Y'all go and see a beautiful woman. You don't even ask if she got a girlfriend. You just grab her by the hand. Foolish. But watch this. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man. For the, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all see how the Most High don't like adultery so much that he's willing to, the Most High willing to fight for you and take you, take somebody out if they try to commit adultery against your wife. So y'all really better take heed to these scriptures because y'all think it's a game to be sleeping around, having sneaky links and all of that stuff. Yeah, right. The God of the Bible ain't playing. He not playing. I'm telling you, <laughs> God came to Abimelech in a dream. And this wasn't a regular dream, y'all. This is one of those dreams where it was a vision 
of impending doom. And you knew that if you didn't change, something was going to happen. You understand? Imagine dreaming about you being taken out in the most gruesome way. You understand? Watch this. Verse four. But Abimelech had came, had not come near her. You know what that mean when they say he had not come near her, meaning he ain't, he ain't sleep with her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Notice he said nation. Notice he didn't say himself, meaning what? The actions that you do as a leader impacts your people. This is for my brothers that's listening now. The actions that you do on an individual basis impacts your nation. So make sure y'all not dipping and dive, dodging, trying to sleep around with other men's wives. Same thing for the sisters. Don't try to be nobody sneaky link because God will judge. God will. Let me come back to this because the precept just popped into my head. Hebrews chapter 13, verse four. Hebrews chapter 13, verse four. It says marriage is honorable and all. So in all things that you could think of, marriage is the most honorable thing on the planet. So he ain't talking about boyfriend and girlfriend. He ain't talking about uh, beneficiaries. Y'all know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean by beneficiaries, right? Friends with benefits and all these other stupid like things that you say. Let me look at this comment. 200,000 Ukrainians were let in order to help them try to repopulate their numbers. Exactly. Okay, their numbers is going down there too. Marriage is honorable in all, Hebrews 13 and 4, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So now we're going to read an example right here in Genesis chapter 20 of the judgment that God was going to do on Abimelech and his nation. He said to him straight, guess what? You sleep with this man's wife? You are but an unalive man. He was going to chop down a tree, y'all. That's how important, because when God set up a marriage, man, that's between God and those two individuals. It's the worst thing for a dude to come in and disrupt somebody else's household, man. It's bad. You cut off that person's bloodline, man. The family tree is done. You understand? But let's go to it. Genesis chapter 20, verse 5. It says, Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands, have I done this? And God said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart. Meaning God, God was like, yeah, I know, but I'm still going to kill you if you mess up. Watch. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. So God kept her from laying down with the man. How did it happen? God sent a plague. All the people of the land wasn't able to produce children. He made them sterile. The women were barren. The women were barren, y'all. The whole nation could not produce children. That was the judgment. It happened to the Egyptians and it happened to these uh, Palestinians or Philistines. Okay. Verse seven. Now, therefore, restore the man, his wife, for he is a prophet. He is a prophet. Guess what? There's books written by Abraham. There's writings. How do you think that the, the our forefathers knew about animal sacrifice and about the laws? They learned it from Abraham. They learned it from Isaac. They learned it from Jacob. It didn't just magically pop up. And for whatever they forgot, remember, Moses had to go up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 night. And the most I had to literally explain to him the history all the way from Genesis all the way down. And then when those records got destroyed by the Babylonians, Esdras or Ezra, the priest from the tribe of Levi, had to go back and redocument it. Watch this. Now, therefore, restore the man, his wife, his wife. For he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee. So the most I was like, I need you to apologize and I need you to go back to him and tell him my bad, bro. I ain't know that that was your, your wife. And guess what? Abraham prayed for him. 
Watch this. He says, and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, meaning if you don't give back this beautiful black woman to this prince, know thou that thou shalt surely unalive thou and all that are thine. Meaning what? Abimelech was going to get the smoke. Abimelech's family was going to get the smoke. Abimelech's nation was going to get the smoke. Shalom to you simply. Welcome to the room. You understand? Same thing with the Egyptians. What was it? What was going to happen if these individuals did not want to keep this? The whole nation was going to get waxed, y'all. So what you think happened to Egypt? They got waxed. What you think happened to Italy just now? Judgment, judgment, judgment. Recently on the news, they said, hey, guess what? Italy can't have babies for three months straight. Three months straight. So now I said to y'all, right, that Esau's seed is spoiled. Now I'm going to have to prove that to you with the Bible, right? Y'all remember when I mentioned that early in the broadcast? So let's go to it. Let's go to Jeremiah 49, verse 10. So y'all remember, whenever we go over information on the forefront radio, we like to back up information with statistics, facts, data, right? We also back it up with scriptures and we back it up with history, right? So now watch this. But I have made Esau bear. Who is Esau? The Romans. Who is Esau? Italy. Who is Esau? France, Portugal, Spain, the descendants of the Greco-Romans. That's who Esau is today. Look it up. Just look up on Google. I know some people, they're like, no, it's not. Google is your God. Take, go to Google. If you don't believe the Bible, do a Google search. They wrote in their own books that they're the descendants of the Romans. Okay. But I have made Esau bear, meaning all the things that God wants to expose about the Romans He's going to expose. Watch this. I have uncovered his secret places. Meaning what? This I do me in. We're reading Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 10. Jeremiah 49, verse 10. Let's read the judgment on Esau. Let's read the judgment. But I have made Esau bear, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. So the Italians, the Romans, the Greeks, you will not be able to hide yourself. It doesn't matter if you call yourself ish. I'm British. I'm uh, Portuguese-ish. I'm Danish. I'm Swedish. I'm Jewish. I'm ish, 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 ish. You full of ish. We know you the Romans. You full of ish. We know you're not American. You you were the British before. And before you were the British, you were the Idumeans. We know who you are. You can't hide. You shall not be able to hide yourself. Now watch this. His seed, his seed, his seed is spoiled. So now what does it mean in the Bible? Put it in the chat when it says his seed is spoiled. Like, you know, when you put milk and you, you got milk and it's outside the refrigerator for two, three days and the, the milk spoils, right? What does it mean by his seed is spoil? Yes, Italy. Italy has not been able to have babies for three months straight. Uh, somebody said, forefront, bro, no one cares about the Bible. It's a fairy tale. Your mama is a fairy tale. Get out of my life. Block. Talking about the Bible is a fairy tale. Your mama's a fairy tale. Stop it. Coming on my live talking about the Bible is a fairy tale. Watch this. Watch this. Is this a fairy tale? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Listen close. Deuteronomy chapter 28. No, let's use the New Testament for the simple syrup, people. Let's read, let's read uh Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Is this a fairy tale? And they, referring to the Israelites, shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and shall be led away captive into all nations and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So what group of people on the earth was led away captive or 
enslaved in all nations. Was it the Chinese? Was it the Japanese? Was it the uh, Arabs? Was it the white people that call themselves Yiddish, British, American-ish? No. The only group that you read about in the Bible and based on history that went into slavery or captivity in all nations are the Israelites. Are the Israelites. So was there a such thing as a transatlantic slave trade? Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat for no. Was there a such thing as a trans-Saharan slave trade? Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat for no. Was there a such thing as a East African slave trade? Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat for no. Was there a such thing as the Native Americans and the Hispanic people being sold into slavery to Spain and Portugal? Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat for no. So a majority of, of the people that are familiar with history that are putting ones in the chat right now are acknowledging that these historical things did take place. So now for people that are putting two, show me the evidence that no slavery, because obviously people have not read a history book. People have not. I have TLB ministry and Atara that wrote down two for no. So slavery never happened. Is that what you're saying? For the two people that put the number two, are you stating that slavery never occurred at all? A global slave trade? There was never a global slave trade. So Atara put no. Atara put no. TLB Ministries said no. Absolutely not. Y'all delusional. <laughs> Y'all delusional. There, listen. Why, if, if slavery never occurred, right, watch this, why did the United States pass a law called the 13th Amendment, where in that law, they said, you are free from slavery or involuntary servitude, except, except if you are convicted of a crime. Hmm. Hmm, why are there slave museums all throughout the United States, all throughout Europe? Listen, they literally had zoos where they were placing black indigenous people in the zoos. So we're reading out of the Bible that the children of Israel were placed into captivity in all nations, okay? This is the proof that what we call history is actually Bible prophecy. So either we're going to believe God or we're going to believe man. The majority of the people in the chat that put one, they actually believe God. Someone says he doesn't know the so-called blacks are the true Israelites. That's probably the case. Let's give you the benefit of the doubt. Welcome to the Forefront Radio, where you will learn the truth and the truth will make you free. Black history is Bible prophecy. Hispanic history is Bible prophecy. Uh, many of the indigenous people that went into captivity in all nations are actually the lost tribes of Israel. I have uh, documented books from Harvard University that prove this point. We have the Bible, we have history, we have archaeology, and many other evidences to prove this point. So now, let's go back to the topic of what we're talking about, right? The nation state of Italy, it's me, Mario. they cannot have babies. The Romans cannot have babies, okay? And they're not the only Roman group that have this problem. They, there are statistics that you can find currently on the United States websites where they forewarned that many of those that are descendants of the uh, Romans, the Idumeans, they are not able to produce children. And by the year 2045, they state that so-called blacks, so-called Native Americans and Hispanics would outnumber them. So now if you read the Bible and you understand the Bible, the children of Israel, the real ones already outnumber 
everybody on the planet. We're like the stars of heaven. We're like the sand on the seashore, but they want to call you, oh, you're a minority. You're a minor. I'm not a child. <laughs> I'm not a minority. There's more of us than y'all. If you calculate all the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans scattered in slavery, shalom to you, Yaabe. Welcome to the room. We outnumber the sands of the sea. So what transpired with what transpired with the Italianos? You're going to read the judgment in the Bible. We were reading Jeremiah chapter 49, and now we're going to go to it once more. Apologize for the sidebar, but I had to deal with the scoffers using scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 10, it says, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed, his seed, his seed is spoiled. So now put it in the chat. What does it mean by the word seed? What does the word seed correspond with? Thank you, uh, Melissa, for your contribution. Thank you, A-Train, for your contribution. Thank you, everyone else, for your contributions to the Forefront Radio. Y'all know I'm an African, right? So I'm going to need all the uh, contributions that I can so we could put forth more works, man. I'm out here teaching in the streets. So if y'all want to give some support, make sure y'all do it however way y'all can. So we got bloodline. We got offspring. We got, what are some other answers? Bloodline, I like that. Offspring, I like that. What is the definition of the word seed? So one person put offspring. Ah, Renaissance put the uh, the baby emoji. Babies, babies. There we go. Your descendants, your children, your bloodline. Exactly. So his seed is spoil. That must mean that whoever Esau is, something would be transpiring with his seed. Thank you, Queenie, for the contribution. Something would be. I'm sorry, Muhammad, but I'm not accepting this any uh, right now. If you're a non-Israelite, just just sit and listen, okay? Because we're talking about a, a important topic right now, and I don't want to get distracted with 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 jibba jabba. So think carefully to what we're talking about here, right? The seed or the children is impacting in some way, shape or form where it's spoiled. The seed, the bloodline is not able to produce itself again. So this is the evidence based on what we're reading here, that a particular group is being shown to have divine judgment for directly from the Bible. Watch this. It says his seed is spoiled, meaning his children and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Meaning what? There's going to come a time, there's going to come a time where not only the Idumians will be impacted, but their brethren, their neighbors, their allies, and he is not. Meaning they're not going to exist no more, y'all. The same people, the same people that are the, the Romans, they're called today, Italiano, France, Spain, Portugal, Britain, Turkish, American, Africana, Australiana. Those are all the descendants of the Idumians, the Edomites, the Herodians, the children of Esau. So now, currently on the news, we hear of a story where for three months straight, the Italians are not able to have children. Three months, y'all. So somebody put the comment, wouldn't that seed line be affected wherever they are? Exactly. Now you, I love a critical thinker. Y'all said it right. Yahoo, Yahoo said it right. There you go. That's exactly right. The seed of the Romans, that means this would affect them everywhere. So now I want y'all to think about it. Did they not push an agenda recently where they wanted to forcefully administer the snake, the snake bite or the bee sting to people all over the planet? 
Did they not do that? Did they not say, hey, we have some medicine for you. It's going to take care of you. But people actually believed that this medicine was going to help them when it ain't do nothing at all. Right? So let's let's see. Let's look up online. Let's do a Google search and see. Yeah, there you go. Five doses. Five doses. Damn, they was trying to take y'all out. <laughs> they wanted to give you five doses. All right, so let's see. So now, if somebody could do a Google search for me, did the state of Italy have a mask uh, administration campaign to provide C-19 to their residents? Yes or no? Did they have a massive campaign to push vaccinations for their state? Yes or no? Thank you all for contributing to the live. I appreciate every one of y'all. Most high Christ bless to you all. So did the state of Italy push vaccinations on their people? Yes or no? Someone that has said shots have impacted millions. Many more are having issues. Correct. Correct. Exactly right. All right. Another one put a uh, Italy has a campaign where they paid you money to have to have to move there to populate because their population declined. There you go. Guess what? Italy wasn't the only one. Y'all saw the videos on uh, TikTok and Instagram. We will pay you $10,000 to come to Greece, come to Italy, come to Roma, come to Spain. That's what they did, right? They was paying people money to come and live in their country because God was sending judgment. Same with Australia. There you go. Why? Because their seed is spoiled. They were the ones that were saying to people, hey, Make sure you give get all these jabba jabba jab jab jib jab 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 jab. And now in 2023, for three months straight, they can't have no babies. You can't make this ish up. <laughs> ah. You can't make it up, y'all. Literally, God is leaving these people childless, fatherless widowless, meaning they're, they're not being able to bring forth any seed. The, the, the destruction of a seed means that they can no longer produce children. So think about the global impact of what's going on right now. These other nations have had animosity. They've had vitriol. They've had enmity towards the children of Israel, right? They persecuted and enslaved a group of people. And now all of a sudden, guess what? Judgments are, are smashing left and right. They go outside in the sun. The sun, Kevin Bacon them, right? Kevin Bacon, get the pun, Kevin Bacon. The sun, Kevin Bacon them, right? And then you notice that various other judgments are happening and transpiring to these nations as well, Right? You see it all throughout TikTok. People are going outside. It's so hot. It's 115 degrees and it's supposed to be 20 degrees, right? Flooding and pestilence and all types of earthquakes and rumors of World War III and all of this stuff. You see what's going on. They're losing. They're losing, right? For three months straight, they're not able to have kids. That sounds like the same judgment that God had on the Egyptians when he said, oh, you want to mess with Abraham? All right, everybody womb is closed. We're going to shut down shop. The baby making factory is closed for today. Thank you. Come again. That's exactly what happened, y'all. That's exactly what happened. Somebody said uh, they too busy living their best life to notice they have reprobate minds. You are exactly correct. You are exact. They're too busy going in their expensive Miatas, Fiats, and all that other stuff, right? Driving, driving their McLarens, living it up, 
off the living in wealth while everybody in the world is is in poverty. Y'all do know that Italy, Rome is where the Vatican is, right? Y'all do know that that Italy, Rome, the Vatican was one the the ones that created the transatlantic slave trade and colonization in the world, right? Y'all do know they're the one that passed all the papal laws and papal decrees that caused all the nation states to work together. Guess what? It was church and state. You had you had the CIA, the FBI, the religious propagandists, and all these people that were indoctrinated with Eurocentric delusionalism in their religion to push their false teachings. Okay. And then somebody said, uh, then plus the Arabian Empire, them too. Exactly. Exact. I saw videos, y'all, of, of Arab people crying and stuff because of all the warfare going on with the, um, you know, conflict between the Yiddish people and the Ottoman Turk Arabs. And I'm sitting there like, I feel nothing. You felt nothing when you were castrating black people and bringing them into slavery. Why should I feel anything about the uh, the conflict going on in Northeast Africa when two groups of people that are both Gentiles are fighting and saying, hey, uh, we want the land. No, we want the land. Original black person raising their hand like, you know, I'm here first. Right. And they're like, we don't care. Negro sit in the back of the bus. Let them fight each other. Stay out of it. Let them bring all World War Three. All the black and indigenous people get out of that region and move further south into Africa or move further in, in another region away from that conflict and let God allow them to fight each other and wipe each other out. That's my advice. Somebody asked me, what do you think about the conflict going on with the Israel, the Israeli and the Palestinian? I said, um, both of them enslaved us. Why should I care? But but little Palestinians, but little Israeli Jewish people, but I ye who I don't care. That has nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. Nor my people. They did not shed a tear at all during the Black Lives Matter protests where black people was like, they killing us, they gunning us down in the streets, help us. I didn't see nobody in the United uh, Nations batter eye at all. At all. So now they fighting each other. You seeing little babies being taken to the hospital and I'm supposed to shed a tear. Sorry, not sorry. This is called judgment from God, man. I'm praying every day for God to deal with those that have oppressed the downtrodden, the poor, the afflicted, while all these nations live in, in opulence, right? My people are on the bottom of society, but I'm supposed to care. Guess what? In Dubai, they're going over it, living in yachts and, and, and living in living it up man Saudi Arabia they're living it up okay so now they're not able to defend themselves and and they want to get black people to fight in their wars for them they want to get Hispanic people to fight in their literally I just saw an article where they were conscripting Hebrews black Hebrews to come fight in the war with Esau makes no sense whatsoever you want to fight for Germanic Yiddish people to fight against other in uh, 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 Palestinians and all of that and fighting that war, you you stuck on simple syrup. Absolutely not. Let let them duke it out. It's like, hey, there's a proverb. Where's that proverb at? Watch this. I'm going to show you that that's even in the Bible. I'm going to show you that that's even in the Bible. Where you see two, two people fighting or conflicting or having some sort of strife. Don't mess with it. Stay out of it. Watch this. I'm going to show it to you in the Bible because people think, oh, four for eight, you're so mean. Don't you care about people? Why, why are you saying that? Watch this. Watch this. It's in the book of Proverbs. I'm going to pull up this pro- this prophecy right here. Listen close to what the Bible says, okay? He that passeth, this is Proverbs 26, verse 17. Write this down. Proverbs 26, verse 17. It says, he that passeth by and meddleth with strife belongeth not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Listen to listen close. He that passeth by you passing down the street and meddleth with strife belonging not to him. Meaning you see two people fighting each other, two people going against each other is like one that taketh a dog by by the ears. So imagine you got two pit bulls fighting each other. 
You got two pit bulls fighting, duking it out, right? Two dogs going right at it. And you want to be the smart one to be like, I like this puppy. Let me grab it by the ears and get it out of the fight and save it. What's going to happen to you? Write it in the chat. If you intermeddle with two dogs fighting, what's going to happen to you? What's going to happen to you? Hmm? Put it in the chat. Bit in that ding, 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 ding. Sister Renaissance with the prize, y'all. Sister Renaissance got it. You're going to get bit. You're going to get bit. So what's going to happen if all these nations decide to interfere? Because that's what's going to happen. God is bringing them all into the Valley of Jehoshaphat so they can all fight with, with, with the Israelis and Palestine and bring them all into World War III. What's going to happen? They all going to get bit. They're going to get the smoke. Meaning, once somebody decides to drop a nuke, it's going to start going everywhere. They're going to be throwing nukes around like hot potato. Hot potato here, hot potato there, hot potato there. You understand? Don't be simple. Don't be simple syrup. All right? You understand? Watch this. The very next verse actually gives you the understanding. It says, as a man... As a madman who casted firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, am not I in sport? You ever had somebody that messed with you, right? And they messed with you so bad that it affected your mentality. And you was like, oh, they was like, oh, nah, bro, I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. That's the same thing here. Watch this. Let's go to Amos chapter one for the brother real quick. Hey, I'm glad that you reminded me of Amos because somebody wanted me to uh, touch on Amos. Amos chapter one, verse six. Let's go to that real quick. Amos chapter one, verse six. Uh, let's start at verse five. I will break. No, nah, actually, let's start at verse six. Uh, let's. Mm, I like this so much. Yeah, let's start at verse six. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Gaza, of Gaza, of Gaza. What's going on? There's conflict right now in Gaza. And for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they took, they carried captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. Wait a minute. The people of Gaza, a.k.a. the Arabs, they worked hand in hand to deliver the children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans into slavery to the Idumeans, the Greece, the Grecians, the Romans. Whenever you read Edom in the Bible, automatically think Rome. Rome, Rome equals who? The United States of America, the British, the French, the Spaniards, all the ish people, British, Danish, Netherlandish, Australianish, all of those ish, 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 that's full of ish. That's who they be. Edom. Verse seven. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitants from Ashdod. When you read in uh, uh, one of the other prophets, I think it's Zechariah or Zephaniah. They say a bastard will dwell in Ashdod. That's going into them people that's calling themselves. Ayi Yehudi, the religious converts, not the blood descendants. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and him that holdeth the scepter from Eshkelon and will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines, the Philistines, the Philistines. Philistines was another word for Palestine, y'all. The Romans changed that region from being called Judah or Judea to now being called Palestine. So the Philistines, according to the Bible, was the ancient Listen close. The ancient, not the modern ones, the Philistines were the ancient indigenous Hamitic tribes that were the descendants of the ancient Egyptians, the Mizraim, the Ludim, the, Ludim, the Kaslusim, and Pathrusim, right? But as you read and study the Bible, you'll find out that many of the Ottoman Turks intermingled with the Afro indigenous people groups of the, the Hamites. And now they call themselves Palestinians 
or Philistina. Okay. This goes into some history. Um, y'all go back and research Genesis chapter 10 and y'all find out that Palestine or the Philistines, the same ones that was fighting against King David, the same ones that was fighting against, you know, uh, uh, King Saul, they now, they now, are still within that region, intermingled with the Arabs, okay, and calling themselves Palestinians. So now, if you look up on a map, you'll find that Ashkelon is in the land of Israel, Ekron is in the land of Israel, Ashdod is in the land of Israel, okay? And now there's going to be judgment! What's the judgment? War. So they they all going to get the smoke. Let's read verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus, that's Tyre, that's the indigenous Hamite tribes, the, the Canaanites, Tyre and Zidon, and for, and for I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the bloody, the brotherly covenant. What happened? The people that live in Northeast Africa were enslaved by the Romans and the Arabs and were sent to the Americas as slaves. That's what happened. We were delivered up to Edom, AKA Greece as slaves. And what is now the judgment? Verse 10, but I will send, this is God speaking, but I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. Meaning what? There's judgments coming to these nations. There you go. Goliath's people. Exactly. Goliath's people, the Philistines. There you go. AKA Palestinians. There are mixtures of very tall African people and also Arabian people. Remember, there were black Arabs and there were uh, Ottoman Turk Arabs too. Okay. So y'all remember the original, uh, the original people of Arabia were black. They intermingled with, with other nation, na nationalities. Okay. That's what you read in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel it says they will mingle themselves with the seed of men within the last Roman empire. The, 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 uh, that's Daniel chapter 10. They will mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's why their seed is spoiled. So now let's get to, let's back, let's get back to the topic. Amos chapter one, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, meaning three sins, and for four, I will not, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity. They didn't have no pity on us. Shalom to you, uh, Amoan. They did not have any pity on us. Every time when you look at the relationship between blacks and the descendants of the Greco-Roman people, they had no pity on us. It says, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. What is that going into? Slavery, colonization, conquest. That's what it is. And did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually. And he kept his wrath forever. Meaning what? They always mad at us for no reason, man. You wake up one morning, you say, good morning, Mr. White Man. How you doing today? Laughing niggers. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what they do. They always mad for no reason. I don't know why. The Bible says they have a perpetual hatred. I be like, God bless you, white man. Like I, I, I can't stand you. You just uh, you're just breathing up my air. Just get out of my way. I if if that's not the evidence, y'all. I literally have proof upon proof on my channel right now that the descendants of the Idumeans, aka Esau, who is the white man, by the way, who is the Romans, he literally has a. I have a video right now where a police officer said that he wanted to get rid of all black people and start a, start a race war. That's literally what he said. Scroll through my, listen, I have a video right now where Caucasian people out of their own mouth are now calling minorities 
terrorists. There's a court case going on right now in the state of Georgia, the city of Atlanta, where they kidnapped and confiscated several, this is 60 to 70 black and Hispanic people. And what happened? They literally said, because you're standing up against oppression, we're going to call you terrorists. That's what happened, y'all. Y'all better pay attention to the news, man. Y'all better pay attention to the news. Craig Irving Sr. said, that is one verse in the Old Testament that talks about Esau destruction, the book of Obadiah. Yes, correct. We do various studies on the children of Esau. When you read the apocryphal writings, the Bible says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of that which cometh. Meaning what? At the end of Esau's empire, the kingdom of Christ is going to come. You understand? Which means that Christ has not returned yet, which means the Idumeans, the Edomites, they still exist. Okay. The Bible says Esau is the end of the world, meaning it's the last ruling empire. Okay. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Okay. I'm not here to uh, entertain scoffers that don't believe the Bible. Those that believe the Bible, the 72 plus people that are in here, all praises to the most high. But the scoffers, y'all could kick uh, rocks with uh, barefoot. All right. So now let's shalom to you, sister Priscilla. Welcome to the room. Welcome to the forefront radio. How you doing, sis? Hope you're doing all right. Shalom to you, Jose. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So now let's consider the fact that the descendants of the Romans, you have books literally saying Edom, the Roman Empire. You can literally Google it. It's from Harvard University, Cambridge University. They tell you who their forefathers are, okay? So now in Italy, in Italy right now, they are not able to produce children. They are not able to produce children. And then we just read a prophecy in Jeremiah 49 that said that Esau's seed or children or descendant is spoiled, is spoiled, y'all, like spoiled milk. You know, you know, when, when your milk goes spoiled, right, that you can't, you can no longer drink it. It's done for, right? You understand? So that's what that's going into. Okay. So now we're realizing that biblical prophecy is transpiring before our eyes. We call the history, the Bible calls it prophecy, meaning what? It's a prediction made thousands of years before it took place. Let's read the comment. Albert said, that book of Obadiah break down the counterfeit uh, uh, Yiddish, which are Esau br preach, bro. Exactly. Thank you for pinning the comment, Miss Missy. All right. That's exactly right. Okay. So now we know based on history, when you read, for example, the brother just mentioned a book of Ch uh, Jasha. Also in the writings of Josephus, a known historian, he writes where the Idumeans intermingled with the Romans, the children of Chittim and the children of Edom, meaning Rome, the, Je the, ja the Japhetic tribes of the people intermingled with the cave people, the, qua the cave dweller. Okay. If you don't know who the cave dweller is, that's the people that you call the long back tribe. Uh, they participate in LGBT activities. Um, you know, broke back mountain, those kind of folks there. You know, they pass laws saying it's okay. They set up a pride month, you know, all them type of jokers, right? Those type of jokers, they want all, they, they were propagating their whole, uh, uh agenda all throughout Africa trying to uh, uh, unpopulate the, the masses by saying, oh, you know what, uh, Uganda, why don't you create an atmosphere where everyone can be gay, 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 happy, 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 happy. We want everybody to be happy. But Uganda was like, to hell with that. What's wrong with you? You nasty. Ew. Broke back mountain. Ew. Booty bandits. Ew. Get out of here. 
And then I love Uganda, yo. They passed a law saying if you want to participate with Western acts, you going to jail. You can't make this stuff up. They said if you want to celebrate what the West want, you going to come come to Uganda with that mess if you want to. You're gonna be sitting in the jail with a piece of bread and and two cups of water. <laughs> so now God judged them. How did He judge them? He said, oh, okay, you Romans want to go ahead and try to make everybody happy, full of your pride month. What happened? Your seed is spoiled. Because think about it. The end of an agenda to create and depopulate people by convincing them to have same-sex relations means that that race is going to be non-existent after several years. So cut the middleman. Just go straight to the source. God was like, oh, you want to make everybody gay? Okay, no more babies for you. No more babies for you. Baby factory closed. And for three months straight, Italy has not produced children, y'all. Three, listen to what I'm telling you, y'all. 90 days, not a single child was born in Italy. Night, listen to what I'm telling you. 90 consecutive days, three months. That's a quarter of a year, y'all. Y'all understand that? Think about it, y'all. If you, if you miss a, a one month of being paid, right? That should be devastating for you, right? One entire month. So imagine three months of having no resources, y'all. Because remember, in ancient times, it was considered a blessing to have children. In ancient times, it was considered a blessing to have children. Even now to this day, when people have children, what do they do? They have baby showers for them. They shower them with gifts. They get stuff for the baby. They, they, they congratulate them for continuing on their progeny. You understand? But now we live in a society where they're pushing so much agendas where people rather go to work than raise up families. You have women that's out here deceived talking about, I don't need no man, but they have babies. You understand? So now Italy Oh, let me see the comment here. Italy is offering men a wife, land to build, and a paycheck. You can't make this stuff up. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> so you're telling me, uh, uh, Wolfie, right? That just made the comment. So you're telling me that Italy is offering men, okay, a wife and land to build and a paycheck. Y'all, listen, stay away from the flatback tribe. God is sending plagues upon them. Stay, Listen, Kim Kardashian is not cute. When you see them women without makeup, they look decrepit and ratchet and nasty, man. I'm telling you, leave the cave people alone. Leave the troglodyte alone. When you see, listen, when you see their women without makeup, they seriously look like the walking dead, y'all. Y'all, y'all seen the Adams family with the, um, Y'all seen the Adams family with that lady? What's her name? Elvira. They look like Elvira, y'all. You understand? Like a walking corpse. Okay. When you see many of these like prominent celebrities, like Jennifer Aniston and all these, right? They look nice on TV. But look at them without the makeup, y'all. Look at them without the surgery, the BBLs, the lip injections, the makeup. They look diminished. They Listen, y'all remember the story in, in the book of Numbers where... Miriam, right? This black woman was mocking the prophet. She was mocking Moses. She was going to her brother and saying to her, to him, Hey, aren't we leaders too? Can't we set us? Aren't we holy too? Why Moses setting himself up to be some, somebody over us? What did God do? God plagued Miriam and turned her to a white woman. He plagued her. He said, Oh, really? You were, oh, leprosy. Boom. Boom. Leprosy turned that black woman straight into a white woman. Guess what? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Aaron was like, 
Why? No, Lord, please, please don't let her look like someone that's half dead or a baby that's unborn out of the womb. That's what happened, yo. <laughs> that's how they look without makeup. That's how they look without makeup, y'all. Like half dead, literally, y'all. Like a baby that just can't. You ever seen a baby that was just born? When the baby just born, the baby look all white and ashy and grayish and stuff like that. You're like, wait, what's wrong with this baby? Where the melanin at? Where, why this baby, the, the mama black, the daddy black, why this baby so light-skinned, right? I say light-skinned. <laughs> but guess what? As the baby produces further on, their melanin starts to kick in. That's how Miriam was looking. So don't fall for the trap, brothers. If they're if they're offering you white women for free, run. <laughs> Listen, don't fall for the okie doke, y'all. Don't fall for the okie doke, y'all. Listen, in the United States of America and in Europe, they were literally doing what? They were hanging black men off of the tree branches. You looked at Becky the wrong way, Lynch. You looked at you looked at Susan the wrong way, Lynch. You 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 just coughed to <laughs> you just coughed at a white woman lynched, and now they're offering them to you for free. Don't fall for the okie doke, y'all. It's a setup, bruh, bruh. Exactly, crucified. Exactly. Don't fall for it. It's a setup, bruh, bruh. But now you got these celebrities that are over here talking about we want us the milk of magnesia. You can't make this stuff up. Get out of here. Stop it. Get some help. Listen, folks, the reason why I'm going over this live is I want to illuminate the minds of the people that God is sending judgments directly to the Idumeans. God is God is sending judgments to to them folk. Leave them alone. He that meddleth with strife belonging not unto him is like he that grabs a dog by the ears. If God wants to judge a nation, Stay away. If there's wars and conflicts going around a nation, stay away. If a group of people are not producing children, stay away. That's God business right there, man. That is God business right there. You understand? All right. So thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. That's it. That's all I got for uh, this discussion. Peace and blessings to you all. Thank you for all the contributors that came on the live and contributed. Make sure you subscribe to the Forefront Radio. We're available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, and now on TikTok. We're also on Facebook, the Forefront Media. Uh, we, we're all over. We're also on Flipboard. So if you uh, have a, a Samsung phone and you have Flipboard, that you could be able to uh, find us on there. But mainly, most of my episodes are on uh, Spotify. I have two YouTube channels, the Forefront Radio number one and the Forefront Radio number two. If you want to watch the live streams or the live videos um, that we play. So let's say you miss any of these episodes, you can go back and watch them. Or some of the old episodes that are just audio only, you can go back and listen to it. All right. Uh, let's read some of the comments. We got, uh, thank you, Shalom, by Sister Queenie. We got Rod Snead that said, thank you, brother. We got Judith that said, thank you. We got Nancy Montgomery that became a follower. We got Nikita that became a follower. Thank you all for following. We got Proverbs that said, thank you. We got Missy that says, this has been very edifying for Front Radio. Thank you. All praise to the Most High. Uh, I know said, Tawada Aki, no problem. Uh, Marco said, thanks for this. Uh, minute of meeting, no problem. We got Nick that said, thanks, brethren, shalom. We got Eno that said, shalom. We got Kirsten that said, shalom. Uh, and thank you. We got Jose that said, thank you. We got, uh, Kathy that just followed. Thank you for following. We got, uh, Crutch Field Customs that said, thank you, bro. No problem. We got Sylvia that said, thank you. We have Divine that said, thank you. So I give all praises to the most high. No honor glows to me. Of course, we give honor to the creator of all things, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of judgment, the God of Daniel. You got divine that's at the water. Most high Christ bless to you as well. So we give all praises to the most high. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. 
Those that are subscribed, we add you onto our Discord channel, okay? It's little, it's minimum, it's like six bucks. So if if you want, please subscribe and you get access to our Discord channel. Uh, I know some people snuck in the Discord channel for free, but it's okay. I know some of y'all came in from, from some of our brothers and sisters that sent y'all invites. And if I sent y'all an invite, come on in. The water's fine. It's all love. It's all uh, appreciation for the word of God. We uh, talk about a lot of different topics. We got Rafaya that said, the water for the bread, ah, no problem. You know, all of these things come from the most high and the glory comes on, goes only to him. So most high in Christ bless to you all and peace.